Well, hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to the playground. I'm Adam, and today we're going to take a look at this monstrosity. So, what we got here is a Clodbuster based old school rock crawler. Um, and I say old school because, you know, this rock crawler was built, you know, long before they were ready to run rock crawlers and there was axials and red cats and all that good stuff. This was done in the beginning of rock crawling. So I made the other video on my Wheelie King rock crawler that is shares some similar stuff as this, but is quite different than a Cloudbuster based one. And I'll put that link here. So anyway, um, I'll bring you down a little bit closer and I'll show you some of the stuff I've done on this. Um, like I said, some of the stuff is similar to the Wheelie King, but a lot of it is completely different. So let's take a look. All right, guys, so let's rip the body off of this guy. And the body, by the way, is a old um, Traxxas Stampede style body. Um, one, I didn't want to run the Clodbuster style body on it because it was so much heavier and that big solid body did not lend itself well to being in the rocks. It got torn up real quick and it got hung up on the rocks really well because you have those hard corners. But anyway, so if you've seen the other video, this will be somewhat familiar. Basically, I did this the same way. We took two aluminum plates, smashed them together, cut them all out, drilled them all out, you know, put a ton of holes in there that, you know, aren't needed because, you know, more holes, more options, more cool. Um, so basically, that's, we, the Clodbuster chassis was gone. Um, literally, there's not much on here that is Clodbuster other than wheels, tires, and axles. Um, everything else is gone. All the chassis, everything from that was, was gone away. So we made the chassis plates. Um, this one, since we have more room, the battery actually slides down here. So looking at it up front underneath, we've got a piece of plexiglass that the battery can slide in and actually run some straps. Um, we just use rubber bands um, for the most part, wrap it around a few times, and it was something quick and easy. You could use zip ties, straps, whatever. Um, wasn't a whole lot of Velcro straps back then, but that's basically mounting the chassis plates to that. This other upper plate isn't as long, and that holds the receiver and the speed control. Uh, this speed control is a newer one. Um, I don't remember when I put that in, but the original uh, Novak dual motor one uh, burned up. Uh, not too, it's fault to mine. I was trying to run too fast of a motor in here to get, you know, speed out of it. But, you know, ingenuity and necessity lends itself to using interesting materials to build with. So these red cross braces, um, again, we didn't have, you know, cool, you know, 40 millimeter threaded aluminum uh, chassis braces or anything like back then. You know, you had to make all this stuff. Well, I didn't have a way to drill and tap aluminum rod or really anything. Um, Could have used pipe or something, but then you would have to solder in a, a piece of all thread and then, you know, sandwich it all together. So, yeah, these are old uh, clothes hanger rods, you know, just big, thick, plastic, chunky clothes hanger. Um, cut them all the same length, drilled them, screws tapped right in. And surprisingly enough, the four of those things have held up its entire life. I've never broken one. I think most of it is focused down here on the plexiglass, but, you know, use what you got, guys. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, the suspension links are very similar to the ones on the HPI one that I did. So these are carbon fiber shaft arrow rods. Uh, the inserts are glued in, and then some all thread, and then pivot ball connectors on each end. Uh, they were Traxxas, I believe. Shocks, I could not tell you what these came off of. Uh, again, probably a big eight scale monster truck sort of thing. And again, back then we knew nothing about geometries and everything. It was all about you know how well it could twist. So it. It works, and again, just like the other one, it works but doesn't work well. Um, we've got some Turnigy 55 turn lathe motors on here. So these, again, were pre-crawler um, motors. Um, they were selling a lot of them at the time because people were buying them to put in crawlers. But, you know, we had to use something 55 turn because all the 540 motors at that time were race motors. They were, you know, 19... 
it turns and below. I mean, we, you would, it wasn't uncommon to go into the race shop and all you could find was like a 12 turn single wound motor. So with this, um, gave you gobs and gobs of torque, decent amount of speed, um, but nothing exciting. Um, actually overall, since the Clodbuster was geared so low, it actually creepy crawls pretty well. Um, so in order to get the shocks mounted on something, because I could not mount them down here because it would, it was too far of a stretch and it would rub into the tire, um, way too quickly. So uh, what I had to make was basically a captured aluminum sleeve. So what I took was a block of aluminum, drilled the hole out to fit the carbon the carbon fiber shaft, and then cut a slit in it from the top of the block down to that hole. And then we cut out the center and plowed out this section. Um, we drilled these first, so those holes will go straight through and line up perfectly. So again, this was a whole lot of um, make it up as you go along engineering. But this worked perfectly because essentially where this thing captures is right at the end of that carbon fiber arrow. And it's where the little insert is actually glued into it. So there is a lot of strength in this little area right here. So never really had to worry about the, um, the weight of this uh, axles and all um, really cause an issue with breaking a link or anything like that. So the top mounts are literally just a three bolt, a Traxxas shock mount spacer, a washer, some rubber fuel tubing from a nitro car, another washer, and a nylon uh, nut. It keeps it on there, it allows it to pivot, it allows it to flex as it cycles through, doesn't bind up, and have never broken one. Um, so another custom piece is these suspension mounts. So the link mounts down here and, you know, you can raise and lower it however you wanted to, um, thought it was going to run it much higher. Um, actually ended up running it at the lowest possible point. Uh, but again, we knew nothing about geometries and stuff. I was a 20 year old kid that, you know, just thought rock crawlers were cool and wanted to have one. Um, the axles are stock. So there's nothing modified in the axles other than the differentials um, were epoxy together. So instead of putting grease near diff, um, we basically epoxied them together so it made a locker. Um, the front four link mount and its mount were all custom made out of just aluminum stock. The servo mount was made out of some aluminum angle iron and drilled and cut and filed and finagled till all that worked. Had to make some little Lexan, Lexan um, or acrylic backers uh, to capture the servo. Um, what else? Let's see, links. Um, this was a custom made link because I couldn't find a actual rod, um, like a turnbuckle rod or anything. So uh, I can't remember what these were off of. They were off of a Traxxas vehicle. I think these are T-Max um, steering rods and link ends but I could not find anything that was this long. So in this one, I actually had to do uh, get a piece of brass and drill it out and solder in some all thread and make my own custom link up there. And <laughs> let me see if I can get it. So this mighty guy is the Traxxas 2055, which for these ginormous tires and the weight of this vehicle, I have no idea how that thing has lived the life that it's lived, uh, but it's still going. It doesn't work well, but it still works. Um, the back end, um, instead of going with four wheel steering, which I should have, uh, we locked it out. I figured four wheel steering was gonna make it too wobbly and uncontrollable. And it probably would have with the strength of the servos we had back then, the rear end would have been walking kind of, you know, back and forth, even though the servo was telling it to go somewhere else. Um, so this is just locked out. It would be pretty easy to manufacture another um, piece to go on here, add a, a rear servo. Um, but at this point, I'm not too worried about it. it. It has served its purpose, it has lived its life, and at this point, it just comes out once in a while, runs around, and we're able to, you know, look back on it. Um, I'm not gonna take this out and beat on it. Uh, too many memories, uh, too much time engineering and re-engineering and cussing and fussing to get all this stuff working. So at this point, this is where this truck's going to stay. 
Um, I, I don't look to do anything else with it. It's just going to be a little fun haver to run around in the yard occasionally. All right, let me hop back out of here and say goodbye. All right, we took a quick close-up look at it and uh, kind of gave you most of the information on it. Now, there's one thing I forgot to cover when we were looking at it up close. So for motor on axle vehicles like the Cloud Buster, um, you've got a motor that's driving the front axle and one that's driving the rear. They're completely separate. Um, they're getting fed two different power feeds um, and there's multiple ways you can do that. The speed controller I have in here actually has dual leads so you can control both at the same time. Uh, you can do two speed controllers if you need to. Uh, there's a ton of different ways to do it. But anyway, basically there is a motor and transmission on both axles. So they're literally the same thing flipped around so the motors are pointing kind of towards each other and nothing sticking out front. Other than that, they're basically the same, same front and rear. Um, like I said, that's why it would be easy to essentially turn this into four wheel steer because the rear end is designed basically with the same parts as the front. So both of them can and will steer. Uh, but again, we're going to leave it the way it is. Um, it's just kind of a fun memory. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, of, you know, how I did some things, you know, take a look at the, the video I did with the HPI Bailey King. It may answer some of those. If not, definitely hit me up in the comments, ask some questions. Um, I can answer anything I have an answer to and be more happy to. All right, guys. Well, as always, thanks for stopping by. Everybody out there, be safe, be happy, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.